welcome back on this channel i'm happy to announce to you that we are starting a new series on catfish breeding termed as how to hatch like a pro throughout this series you are going to gain the required knowledge to first set up your farm your catfish hatchery secondly how to hatch successfully and thirdly how to manage your fries to the fingerling stage so join me on this uh, series and learn more no matter your expertise level we have you covered if you're a beginner you can join if you're an expert and facing challenge in your hatching process kindly join this series as well this is an exciting uh, uh, series that i wish you all can join and then uh, we all share the knowledge in this chapter we are going to talk about some of the basic features of our breeding facility and also some necessities you must have in that facility to enhance your hatching process join me as i take you to the hatchery room to show you some of the basic necessities and features of an hatchery thank you so guys this is a simple um, hatching facility that you can set up but before even um, um, even deciding to set up something like this you need to consider certain things is the chosen location where you want to set up this hatchery does it have a reliable water source that is the question you have to ask yourself even before you set up your hatchery you also have to ask yourself is the facility accessible for others your potential customers to visit another question you must answer yourself will the facility serve me well as in the commercial aspect as in i personally is the area conducive enough for me to work in you need to ask yourself this before you choose to set up a simple hatchery like this so let me take you to the basic features of the individual hatching vat and then uh, uh, we proceed from there so first of all i want to show you the structure itself the structure is well covered entirely this is an exit door which will be closed during operations and we also have a roof over the the the, the facility which is very important and the reason for this closure you see the windows have been closed as well the reason for this closure is to one uh, prevent predators from um, hunting our, our finger lens fries and also to be able to accumulate a certain temperature ambient temperature in the room to let's say 28 degrees celsius that is my ideal temperature and also to prevent excessive dust from polluting our water from entering our hatching vat which will be very uh, 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 discouraging to see that so basically this is a simple hatchery setup let's now move to the hatching vat these are hatching vats someone will call the hatching pond it's very simple this is constructed using an ibc tank this is the vat and let me show you the basic features of an hatching vat okay so an hatching vat has to come with an inlet pipe which is this this is how to construct the inlet pipe there are several designs but basically this is how to construct the inlet pipe the inlet pipe is also perforated to allow oxygen to drop into the hatching vat whenever water is being dispensed this is another feature an overflow protection an overflow protection to prevent our pond from overflowing and also um, to to prevent uh, our fries from escaping the the drainage pipe so an overflow pipe must be constructed well it must be precise in order to avoid your fries from entering the overflow pipe and also to prevent water from uh, flooding your pond so this is the basic features another feature is the outlet valve which will be used in the daily activities to drain out the waste water from the vat so let me go back and show you how a simple hatching vat is this is basically an inlet an overflow and then a drainage i believe you've picked something from this setup that you can mimic so if you need any setup like this you can also contact jagdam farms and we will surely set up a facility for you and moving on to the basic necessities of a catfish hatchery we made mention of a, a, a hatching vat and then the features and also you must have your test kits readily available to test your water parameters this is very important because even after identifying the desired site location and also your uh, structure design i made mention that you also have to uh, be sure that there is 
quality and reliable water source at your chosen location because that is going to be used to uh, uh, undergo your basic uh, daily routines on your hatchery. Fishes are all about water, quality water, quality feed, and then the care you give to them. So make sure that you have your water test kits to be able to determine whether your incoming water is of the standard value. I'll make mention of our, we will treat the basic uh, parameter parameters range in fish farming or in hatching as well. So after getting your um, um, test kit, you also need to get, the test kit comes in uh, the pH tester. This is a complete set, pH, nitrate, nitrite, ammonia, and then, um, uh, uh, yes, pH, nitrite, nitrate, ammonia. And I also have a temperature uh, sensor here, which is very, very important. Temperature sensor as well here. I also have um, TDS and EC. TDS meaning total dissolved solids tester right here and because of my water source i'm using the commercial water source that is Ghana water i have my chlorine tester as well to test whether the chlorine content in my incoming water is good i am treating it using activated carbon i'll make a video on that how to treat your water before using but i need to test after my treatment i also have some baking soda and uh, uh, other buffering uh, 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 materials here and most importantly is yes, your artificial hormones i'll make mention i'll talk about the artificial hormones artificial hormones are gonadotropical hormones that we use to inject our fishes to uh, stimulate ovulation so this is our hormones we are using over prime we also have ovulin and other brands as well in the market we will talk more about that we also have your hand gloves which is also very important as a biosecurity measure a tissue for our daily activities as well and of course our feed which will be used to feed our fries we have our antimia here we have several other uh, materials that we use in the hatching process as the series comments i'll talk more about each and everything that we are going to use in the hatching process we also have some probiotics uh skill but also very important our sensitive skill to weigh our fertilized eggs and i think one thing missing which is very important just a second the spawning net or the kakaban this is a kakaban people make use of spawning net this is where we are going to spread our fertilized eggs you get to know when as the video uh, uh, as the series uh, uh, proceeds so these are some of the basic things you need to achieve a successful spawning kindly make sure that you join the next episode or the yes the next episode to learn more as we comment the next episode is going to be an exciting one where we'll talk about how to induce your fishes we'll talk about how to buffer your water we'll talk about how to spread your eggs and then the preceding episodes will be fry management thank you for watching this video this is jagdam farms your favorite channel when it comes to fish farming